Hello viewers, in this DIY video, I will show you how to replace the thermal fuse of a dead instant pot and bring it back to life. So as you can see that this instant pot is dead, the screen is not turning on even after I plugged in the power cord. This is not an uncommon problem, especially if it happened all of a sudden for no reason, like there was no power surge or you did not drop it accidentally hard on the floor, etc. Then it's mostly because of a blown thermal fuse. You don't have to repair it if it is already under warranty, but you don't have to throw it either, as replacing the fuse itself costs not even $2. So what's the harm to give it a try and save some money? Whatever tools or replacement parts I am using in this video, I am giving the Amazon link for those in the description of this video below, so you can get them if you want to buy. To locate, diagnose and replace a dead thermal fuse, let's take out the top cover and make sure you took out the cooking bowl and the cooker is empty. And then unplug the power, which is very important and you must always do it. You have to remove the bottom cover of the pot. To do that, first zoom a little to show you the screws that need to be removed to uncover the bottom. If you see, it's not a plus or minus shaped normal screw. It's hexagonal or star shaped screw with six sides. So you need a special screwdriver or drive bit that matches its shape. If you are a DIY enthusiast, you might already have the required screwdriver or the drive bit set. I will first take the screw out, then twist the cover plate anti-clockwise and raise it to take that out. First, take a look and see if there is any burnt components. If you see anything burnt, then you have a different issue and need a different fix, which is not covered in this video. But as you see, there is nothing visibly burnt and everything looks fine. So mostly it is a blown fuse issue. Now to locate the fuse, first see where the power plug port is present. And from there, the red wire coming is the live wire which should actually have the thermal fuse somewhere in the middle or at the end. Now, if you give a close look here, you see a part of the red wire is wrapped in white thermal insulation, which is tied to the side a couple of inches below. That's where the fuse is, but unfortunately we cannot reach out there without actually taking out the base of the cooker. So what we have to do, we have to take out this three screws at the base. A normal screwdriver will work here as these are plush shaped screws. I will take them all out and gently take the base out of the way. Now you see clearly the insulated part where the thermal fuse is. This small metal spring holds the wire and the fuse inside tight so it does not get in touch with the other components inside. You push this spring a little upward and then try to push the wire down and that should release the wire. Now. Slide the insulation to expose the thermal fuse and here we go. Now I will use a multimeter continuity check option to see if the fuse is actually blown or still it is working. The meter displays the OL symbol that means it is ready to check the continuity. Don't worry if you don't have a multimeter you can still check this with an alternate method that I am going to show you shortly. 
I will use the testers to touch both ends of the fuse and if the fuse is still working then the OL symbol should go away. It is still showing the OL symbol. Now we know for sure that it is a blown fuse issue. Let me also show you the alternate method to detect if the fuse is blown for which you need to be very careful because we have to plug in the power cord. Make sure you take utmost caution not to touch anything in the circuitry. With this method, you need an electrical voltage tester, which is also a low cost below $10 equipment. And I will use the tester to check that end of the fuse connected to the power source with the red wire. And as you can hear, the frequent beeping means the voltage is there. But other end of the fuse does not as the moment you take the tester to the other end, it's not beeping at all. Now we are sure where the problem is. Let's unplug the power first. If you don't have a multimeter or tester, then based on what you see, you have to make the best guess if the fuse is actually the issue. Next, we need to take the blown fuse out of the way and replace it with a new one. Thermal fuses can be connected or disconnected by simply twisting or untwisting the wires at both ends of the fuse. Clean and straighten the wire ends to make sure they have a strong bond when twisted with the fuse and they are in contact with the fuse at least for half an inch. Now this is the thermal fuse that we just took out. And these are replacement fuses. I got a 5 pack just for $6. Twist the open ends of the wires to the two ends of the fuse and make sure they are strongly holding each other. Slide the thermal insulation to cover the exposed areas of the fuse. Put it back where it was before. So the flat metal spring will keep it tight and secure. Put the base back. Tighten the three screws. Place the bottom cover and twist it clockwise so it is secure within the clamps. Put the screw in and you are all set. Plug the power cord back in. And as expected, now we can see the nice blue screen turned on and congratulations. So viewers, please provide your feedback in the comment section of the video and hit the like button if you found it useful. That will mean a lot to me and help grow this channel.